Hello friends! Welcome to a brand new video. Today we are going to be talking through my June TBR and oh my goodness you guys, it's a good one. I have not been this excited in such a long time. <music> to acknowledge because you may or may not notice that there is little to no fantasy in this stack. I am just blown away. I don't know what my problem is you guys but fantasy is just not doing it for me lately. Something about summer and just wanting to read light reads. I've just been wanting to read all the romance books so there is some romance in here surprisingly. So we're gonna see where that journey takes me this summer and I am going to go ahead and start with my Suns Out Books Out TBR. You guys, I am hosting along with my four other closest friends a summer readathon. If you have not watched that video, please go and check it out. I'll leave it in the description below, but from June 20th through 26th, we are going to be reading all the summary reads. I'm going to be going through the prompts now and maybe my TBR will spark some ideas for you as you try to gather your stack for the week but I am just so pumped about June. This is literally probably gonna be my favorite reading month of the whole year other than maybe fall. Fall is always a really good time but seriously I love summer and I am so excited to dive into these books. Like I said I'm going to be hosting along with my friends the Suns Out Books Out readathon and our group buddy read for the readathon is The Counselors by Jessica Goodman. I don't think I've ever actually read anything by this author before so I am extra excited. The fact that this one is set at a summer camp and there's a dead body that turns up in the lake and there's a mystery. Literally there is nothing more perfect for summer than this mystery thriller. I am super stoked about this one. It comes out, actually I think it comes out tomorrow so it should be out by the time you see this video but I am just so excited for it. I think this is gonna be such a cool and just really intriguing one to discuss with the group. Our first prompt for the readathon is to read a book with yellow on the cover, and I chose none other than Reckless Girls by Rachel Hawkins. I have been dying to get to this one since it came out earlier this year, but I've been putting it aside for a special occasion just like this for the perfect moment to pick it up. I know close to nothing about this other than I think six strangers or people end up on an island that has a history of like cannibal cannibalism and then someone goes missing. It literally just sounds perfect for summer and I think this is going to be such a fast-paced book to go through for a readathon. I've been wanting to give this author a try because I've never read The Wife Upstairs or anything by Rachel Hawkins. I don't know what's going to happen or what's going to go down but it sounds really creepy especially when I heard the word cannibalism. Our next prompt is to read a chiller or a chill thriller and I could also use Reckless Girls for this one if I am strapped for time, but I decided to pick up The Kind Worth Killing by Peter Swanson. Lauren definitely influenced me big time to pick this one up. She came out with a recommended thriller list of her favorites that she's read so far this year. This just sounds absolutely nuts. There's a man named Ted and a girl named Lily that I believe end up at an airport together. So they end up talking and Ted expresses that his wife Miranda has betrayed him. I'm not sure if there's cheating involved, but he jokingly says to Lily, yeah, I kind of want to kill her. And Lily said, well, I'll help you. And I'm like, hold up, what are we about to go into? Because I need to know this crazy ride of a book. I don't know what to expect, but I just know I'm going to be completely sucked in. And surprisingly, Peter Swanson has never been someone that's been high on my radar. This one, though, is like his most popular. I think it was published in 2015, 2016. But I am just very, very intrigued. This could also count as yellow on the cover. So I feel like between these two, I'll definitely be able to get one of them read. Next up is a book chosen by a friend, and I kind of had to stretch this one a little bit, but Lauren, apparently this whole TBR is inspired by Lauren, said Dial A for Aunties is actually really good, which, confession, I did pick this up wanting to fit it into a prompt of some sort, and she just confirmed my choice that I need to get the audio, so I just picked this as she chose it for me. So this has been on my 
list for so so long because I've heard it has similar vibes to Finley Donovan. There's that humor, there's just that funny intrigue, and I'm gonna read some of the back because it seriously sounds hilarious. When Madeline Chan ends up accidentally killing her blind date, her meddlesome mother calls for her even more meddlesome aunties to help get rid of the body. Unfortunately, a dead body proves to be a lot more challenging to dispose of than one might anticipate. <laughs> I need to know how in the world she ends up accidentally killing her blind date. Apparently, this is also packed with Asian culture and a lot of good representation in this, so I am extra, extra excited for it, you guys. This is top of my list, and I just cannot wait. I really, really hope this one ends up being five stars for me. Our next prompt is to read a book with an ocean, island, beach, sea setting, something that has to do with water that makes you think of summer. And I have had this one on my list ever since it came out. I don't know why I've been pushing it off because it's so short, but it is The Girl Who Fell Beneath the Sea. This is such a stunning cover and I had to fit in some type of fantasy into this readathon. It's very, very short, surprisingly. I cannot remember if it's a standalone. Deadly storms have ravaged Mina's homeland for generations. Her people believe the sea god, once their protector, now curses them. Each year, a beautiful maiden is sacrificed to the sea in the hopes of appeasing him. Many believe that Shim Cheung, the most beautiful girl in the village and the beloved of Mina's older brother, Jun, may be the one to finally end the suffering. But on the night Cheung is to be sacrificed, Jun follows her out to sea, knowing that to interfere is a death sentence. To save her brother, Mina throws herself into the water in Chung's stead. Just the family dynamic in here and this monster or this sea god just sounds absolutely terrifying. This one has been really really highly anticipated for me for such a long time now and yeah I'm just very excited to finally get to it during the week of the readathon. Our last prompt is to read a book while on a picnic and of course you guys know I have to add a graphic novel to all of my readathons. This one looks perfect, absolutely perfect. It's called Seaside Girls, The Secret of Danger Point. So these two girls are best friends and one of them ends up swimming into a secret cave or a cove. And after that, she ends up seeing ghosts and strange things start happening. And I literally cannot with this artwork. It's like this light pastel color palette, a mystery set on an island. It's also middle grade. So there's some cute crushes they have on boys. And it just sounds like the perfect light read once again for summer. Oh my gosh, I was wondering who was blowing up my phone. And my sister just finished the last episode of Stranger Things season four and the messages just keep on coming. If you guys haven't seen it, go watch it now. If you've never watched the show, here's my plug. Go watch it now. You will never ever ever be disappointed in that show. So here is my official stack for the readathon. Look how bright and aesthetic this is. I am so excited. Look at all these yellow books. I really don't know if it's going to be realistic to get through all of these, but we're going to try. You guys, we're going to try. We're going to be doing live sprints June 24th on a Friday. We're going to be doing lots of other fun things, so you guys should pick your TBR, tag us in your videos. I cannot wait to see what you guys read. So aside from the readathon, I actually have 10 other books on my list for this month, but if most of you don't know, I'm actually taking a break this summer from photography photography so I am planning to read a lot of books by the pool and I'm talking lots of romances lots of light fun fluffy reads and the first one that I actually have already started and have been loving and I'm so glad I've been loving because a lot of people love this book is Love and Other Words by Christina Lauren really what intrigued me to pick this up is they did a recover or a redesign of the cover and it's so precious and cute I think I'm about a third of the way through, but basically this is just about high school sweethearts in the past and then in the present they end up reconnecting, but one of them is already engaged and this is just so sweet. Like I love this story. I love a good wholesome romance. This is just so 
realistic. I love this because there's no lack of communication. I don't know. I just, I'm only a third of the way through and I'm already gushing about it. So this actually has a lot of emails and letters back and forth which is such a fun time and i am so connected to these characters already i have thoroughly been enjoying this i know it's a backlist title but i don't even care when i saw this cover i just was like okay this has never been on my radar before but i need to read this now one true loves by taylor jenkins reed she has also been getting a lot of redesigns for her covers and i love the minimalistic vibe of these i really want to get the other few back list titles that look like this because it just screams summer to me. I have read Daisy Jones and the Six and Evelyn Hugo and Malibu Rising and while I don't think her plots are the best, her character development and her writing completely sucks me in. It has been such a long time since I've read one of her books. So with this one we have our main character who I think ends up getting married to a guy who is in a plane accident and she's told that he passes away. Way. Well, in a few years down the road, she's engaged to someone new, but then she finds out her previous husband or either fiance, I can't remember if it's husband or fiance, but she ends up finding out that he's actually alive. So this is just gonna rip my heart out. I know I'm gonna cry. My friend Kayla just read it and gave it five stars. So I'm very confident that while I think her newer books are kind of mediocre, I really think I'm gonna love her backlist titles. I don't know what it is, but I just had this inkling that this is gonna be a new favorite. Next I have The Last Summer at the Golden Hotel. Does this not scream summer to you? I had to pick this up at my local thrift store. We have these two families who have always been business partners and own like this hotel resort but something goes wrong to where they have to make a decision to I think either sell it or shut it down or save it. So I know there's lots of secrets, there's lots of scandal. Honestly, I'm here for it. This just sounds really fun and it looks like multiple perspectives. There's also newspaper articles. So I think this is just gonna be one that I fly through. I've heard a lot of good things about this one and hopefully it doesn't let me down. Next, I have two very, very, very popular thrillers that I still cannot believe I haven't read yet and I feel like these are gonna be perfect for summer. The first one is The Night Swim by Megan Golden. I recently read her newest book, Stay Awake, that I think comes out in July or August, maybe even June, but I absolutely adored her writing. Even though I didn't love Stay Awake, I knew that I had to pick up another book by her and somehow I got an art copy and I never read this. So I'm so excited. I haven't seen any of my friends read this poorly. So in this book, I think we have a woman in a small town who gets assaulted and she's found dead. And then I believe in this same town today, there are more women that are being attacked and killed. And so there is a crime reporter. I think this is actually played through or written through like a true crime podcast of some sort, which I think is super cool. I'm super into true crime podcasts. So I'm looking forward to it. I think why I've put this off for so long is the premise doesn't exactly scream out to me. It doesn't sound extremely unique, if that makes sense. I'm just looking forward to diving into another book with her writing because it was so, so good. Next up, I am going to try and read We Were Liars by E. Lockhart. Somehow I have escaped being spoiled for this book for years, ever since I started my bookstagram, and I feel like I need to read it now because on the back it says, We are Sinclairs. We live, at least in the summertime, on a private island off the coast of Massachusetts. Perhaps that is all you need to know, except that some of us are liars. I also picked this up at my local book thrift store and it's signed, which is super fun, super cool. It was only $5, so I've held on to this for this moment. It is time. It's time to bring out all the summer thrillers. I've recently been in the mood to pick up a middle grade book and I was trying to browse through my shelves and figure out a summary book, but for some reason I don't own like super summary middle grade books, but one that is near and dear to my heart. I've seen the movie. This is just a duh obvious moment why I would read this is Kiki's Delivery Service. I love this so much. While I think it's really good for Fall and Autumn because she is a witch, there's just so many cute seaside vibes and cottagecore vibes and the town is so small and so cute and I mean this is 
super short. I could literally read this in one sitting. I love the movie. I'm obsessed with Gigi and Kiki and I can't believe I haven't read the book yet. So for obvious reasons, I'm going to be picking this one up. It just sounds perfect because it's set on the seaside. Of course, I feel like you all know by now at the end of my videos, I always like to add graphic novels and manga. My graphic novel that I chose is called Be Prepared by Vera Braskel. Look at this. This is so cute. Her giant glasses, her freaked out face, and I don't know how I feel about this all green color palette. It's kind of like a weird pea green. I don't know how I feel about it, but it's set at a summer camp. It's at a Russian summer camp that our main character is sent to. So at the beginning, there's actually this hilarious note that she writes to her parents. It says, camp is nothing like I expected. I know all my rich friends back home think I'm weird, but I was sure that at Russian summer camp, everyone would be like me and we'd sing songs and eat some mores and be best friends. Nope. The girls in my tent are five years older than me and they did not want me here. This camp has no electricity, no plumbing, and absolutely no candy. And the outhouse? I can't even think about the outhouse without gagging. I can't survive two weeks of this. Please come get me, please. I am desperate. It just sounds so cute <laughs> and also very, very dramatic. If a graphic novel has great humor, I could care less about the art style or anything else. This is just going to be such a good summer fun time. One manga that I would love to continue reading is volume 7 of Spy Family. I'm sure you guys have seen me talk about this a million times. I'm sure you guys have seen everyone talk about it a million times because it is now a show that's on Hulu for free. If you guys want a little taste of what this is like, go watch the first episode. I kid you not, you are going to be sucked in. The little girl Anya is hilarious. I love this family to death. I need Need to read number seven so I am finally caught up. This is basically about a little family that's not really a family but they're a spy family. Duh. But we have our main character who's on this mission and then the wife is like this assassin and the little girl is trying to be buddy buddy with this boy at the school to try to help her dad kind of infiltrate and learn secrets about his mission at the school and it's so much more detailed than that but I won't go into that because this is number seven. I'm so happy to continue on reading this. And the last book I have on this forever long TBR is Children of the Wales Volume 2. Does this cover not just scream summer to you? I read the first one a while ago and was floored by the plot twist. This is actually taking place on a floating island of sand where a bunch of past criminals live. It looks like nothing you would think. It looks like a middle grade light read, but it's not all as it seems to be. But the fact that it's on an island or has an island setting, there's lots of water in involved. There's a little bit of magical realism. I love it. I love this series and I've only read the first volume so I feel like it's the perfect time now that it's summer to pick this one up and continue. I'm pretty sure I have my work cut out for me. I've got a lot of books to get done. A lot of books to get read in June. I'm basically just gonna be chilling by the pool all summer long because I don't have much else going on. So we will see in my wrap up how many of these I actually got read because I'm interested to find out myself. But thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you join our Suns Out Books Out readathon. It's gonna be amazing with sprints and giveaways and just all the summary feels. So I hope you guys join that. Thank you so much for supporting my channel. I love you so much and I will see you in my next video.